Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing the curse, the Cluster C personality disorder. So if you guys don't know, we have already talked about Cluster A and B, and those videos can be found on our main channel. Uh, there's a site for the USMLE Step 1 playlist, and that's where the, uh, the Cluster A and B videos are. So go ahead and check them out. But in this case, we're going to be talking about Cluster C. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And with that being said, let's begin our discussion about the Cluster C personality disorders. So these are the worried personalities, right? That's what we're going to be discussing today. All of these people are usually worried about one thing or another, and that's a very hallmark indication that someone has a Cluster C personality. And the three main personality disorders that you should be uh, familiar with for Step 1 are the Avoidant Personality Disorder, Dependent Personality Disorder, and the Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder, which we've discussed a little bit in the OCD video that we had uh, earlier. So that is mainly what we're going to be discussing today. Day. Those are the, the, the personalities. Some things to know is that all of these personalities are characterized by fear and anxiety. That's the type of behavior they have across the board. That's why we call them the worried personality disorders, okay? So they're all characterized by that. And there's also a genetic association with several genetic disorders um, that tend to show up. So let's first start talking about the avoidant personality disorder and uh, the, what we're going to discuss specifically are the characteristics. For step one, you're going to be uh, able to spot someone who has avoidant personality disorder very easily because these characteristics are very different from a lot of the other personality disorder videos that we've, as uh, personality disorders we've talked about in our previous videos in the cluster A and B category. So, these people avoid social interactions. Now, I know this is very similar to the schizoid uh, personality disorder that we discussed earlier in uh, cluster A, but in fact, this is different because in schizoid personality disorders, those people have a voluntary desire to avoid social interact interaction. In avoidant personality disorder, it's involuntary, meaning they're hypersensitive to rejection, and it's actually kind of a phobia that they might have. They might be afraid of getting rejected. They might be afraid of you know people not understanding them, and because of that, they try to avoid societal society and social interactions. They have uh, a fear of being inadequate, and they're afraid that people won't like them in general. They're just afraid, right? That's why we call it the worried personalities. They're afraid of embarrassment, and they desire relationships with others, but they just cannot create those relationships simply because, A, they avoid social interaction, and they're just afraid of everything else, right? They're if you're inadequate, and they're afraid of embarrassment. That's different than schizoid, because in schizoid, they don't want to have relationships with anyone else, right? That's what we just wrote right here. It's the main difference. Uh, they also struggle, struggle with intimate relationships like we discussed earlier, and they often have self-sabotaging uh, situations. Often that's what ends up leading them to break the relationships that they may have. So that's avoidant personality disorder. The next disorder is dependent personality disorder. And in this case, these patients are dependent on others excessively to the point where they shouldn't be, right? This may be a 30-year-old man who's very, very dependent on his uh, partner to the point where he can't do anything without his partner's help and uh, 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 supervision, sorry. So they struggle to take care of themselves. They're very clingy, right? That's why we, we got this uh, uh, photo right here. They have excessive need for support and, you know, positivity and positive reinforcement. They often need that, so it makes it difficult for them to make decisions on their own. And that means any decision, right? I know a lot of times people complain like, oh, my partner won't decide where to go eat. No, this is like they can't decide anything. If you guys watch The Good Place, it's kind of like the guy Cheaty. It's very similar to that. He may, you know, he's not able to make decisions, and that's what dependent personality disorder is. They can't make their own decisions. They ask their partner or the person dependent on to make the decisions for them. They want someone just to tell them what to do. That's the main main thing about dependent personality. They they have difficulty expressing their opinion and they have very low self-esteem simply because they don't believe that they can make those decisions or they don't believe they can make the right decision that they have to make. 
And these patients often get stuck in abusive relationships. That's a very hallmark thing you may see, right? It, it, people think that, you know, it may be uh, Stockholm Syndrome. That's one reason why. Another reason why is because a lot of times those people are dependent on their partner, even though they're getting abused. They know they're getting abused, but they stay with the partner because they don't feel like they can survive on their own. They can be successful on their own. They can live properly on their own. And hence, they get stuck in these abusive relationships. So that's dependent personality disorder in a nutshell. And then finally, we have obsessive compulsive personality disorder. In obsessive compulsive personality disorder, people are preoccupied with order, perfection, and control. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to this. They love to make to-do lists. And man, I definitely love to make to-do lists because it lets me stay on track with the things I need to do. AKA, that's why I have order. I like to make sure I finish everything, you know, because I like to make everything perfect and you know I like to be in control that's I probably have OCPD right I probably have obsessive compulsive personality disorder I'm sure a lot of you guys have as well so the example of this is pre-med and medical students you guys you guys have OCPD that's a perfect example you don't have OCD don't get that mixed up you have OCPD uh, this is a very egocentric behavior, which means that this behavior consists uh, with one's own beliefs and attitudes, and it's actually very beneficial. That ends up helping you out because. Uh, a lot of times, the order, the perfection, and the control that you want to have may help you study. It may help you get done, get the tasks you need to complete done faster and more effectively. That's why we call it egocentric. And they're very inflexible at work or in relationships. And because of that, it often uh, ends up sometimes having a negative effect on them, especially their relationships. Some people may get into a relationship with someone who has OCPD and realize, you know what, this person likes control a little too much. Um, not in like an abusive way, but to the point where, you know, he's very obsessive or she's very obsessive about order and perfectionism and it puts a strain on the relationship. That's very common. Uh, and usually this behavior does help them achieve their goals when it comes to their work or education uh, in their relationships. It usually doesn't. So with that being said, that's pretty much all you need to know about the Cluster C personality disorders. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel if you guys haven't already done so. We post you Assembly Step 1 videos regularly, usually on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, if you guys don't know, you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. So just search Mad Medicine and you can find us there. You can listen to us while you run, while you go to the gym, while you're going to the clinic, et cetera, et cetera. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and go ahead and continue on to the next video.